Before my period, I feel like the world's gonna end. I wanna give up on all my projects. I wanna change everything that I've planned for the future that I actually wanna do. And I just feel in a complete state of despair. So I wanna know what is happening in my brain that makes me just want to throw every single thing that I've worked on out the window right before I come on. Hello, we've got in from a long day at work and it's one of those days where the dinner is going to be hoops on toast because i am exhausted if i put this down on can we see it looks like i'm the flame let's try and move that will that do i mean steven gerrard can you please get out of my frame it's been a day of a lot of stress and a lot of questioning every single thing that i do and that's because I'm due on my period. And in the days before I have my period, I just feel like the world is gonna end. I feel like I'm crap at every single thing that I do. Am I in the right career? Should I change what I'm doing? Any plans that I had about making videos or whatever? I'm like, it's all rubbish, put it in the bin, start again. No one wants to see, blah, blah, blah. And it's just constant in my head. Every single time it feels like it's so real. It feels like, oh my God, I need to just change everything about <laughs> my life. So, what's going on? That's what I want to know. Why does the world feel like it's ending before I start my period? Right before we come on our period, there is a drop in two key hormones in the body. These are estrogen and progesterone. These two hormones go up and down throughout the menstrual cycle. Estrogen going up before ovulation and then coming down and then progesterone going up after ovulation and then slowly coming down. So when your period actually happens, you are in this pith of estrogen and progesterone. If you're on contraceptive pill, hormonal pill, then these levels are normally kept steady throughout the month. So the egg isn't matured and released. So they're kept at a steady level all the way through. So what is it about the drop in these hormones that can potentially cause some of the symptoms that I have right before my period? Premenstrual syndrome or PMS is thought to occur in about 50% of women. And this includes all sorts of different symptoms like mood changes and also feeling really fatigued. And for some people it can be super extreme, which I'm gonna get to later on in the video. Now, when I went to look at the research for this area, Kelsey Breeze, there was not a lot on there about periods, menstruation, mood, patriarchy, we know how it is. So there are studies out there, but they are quite small. And so I think the results just need to be taken with a little bit of caution. And in a lot of studies about mood, women have purposely been excluded from these because of our menstrual cycles. And it's even done in lab animals. They'll say, we'll just use male mice because they don't have these fluctuations, which is so annoying because I'm trying to understand what is happening because of these fluctuations and then people are just going well because you have them you're getting excluded and i also don't want to perpetuate the like oh my god it's your time of the month sexism sort of attitudes and danger of like oh my god she's so moody huh? she must be on her period like no this is about me trying to understand what is actually the consequence of these hormonal changes on my mood and on my behavior so i can if i understand it better then i will hopefully be able to be like ah that's what this is rather than me following through with any of these actions and just, yeah, not doing the things that I want to do. So firstly, what do estrogen and progesterone actually do in the brain? Most estrogen and progesterone is actually made in the ovaries and the brain is very, very picky about what it lets in. It has a barrier around it. So not every chemical in the body can just come into the brain and disrupt what's going on but both estrogen and progesterone are lipophilic. And that means they can cross this boundary and get into the brain. But it's not just about them getting into the brain. There are also receptors that these molecules can attach to on brain cells. And these are found in regions associated with memory and emotion. So like the amygdala, the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex. Firstly, estrogen is thought to enhance excitatory activity in the brain, that is glutamate transmission and decrease inhibitory transmission, which is GABA transmission. And in animal studies, it's actually been seen that having estrogen in the brain can lead to changes in an area called the hippocampus, really important for taking information and putting it into the long-term memory. So this area has more plasticity in these studies. And also some research has shown that as estrogen peaks, we may be able to better 
recognize fear. So it does have a role in our processing of emotions as well. Progesterone is kind of like the opposite of estrogen in terms of what it does to the excitatory and inhibitory transmission in the brain. It enhances the inhibitory transmission and a metabolite of progesterone actually directly interacts with brain cells, which cause activity to dampen down. The highest level of progesterone receptors is found in the amygdala. And this is an area super important for processing emotions. And when progesterone is at its peak, it's been found in some studies that people react quicker to negative stimuli. So it's potentially involved there in some sort of negative emotional processing. So before our period, both of these drop. So you can see how it's likely to have an impact on emotion and on our mood because both of these hormones are directly involved in modulating positive and negative emotions. Aside from just the hormonal effects of progesterone and estrogen dropping out of the brain, a really important thing to take into account here is what researchers call the biopsychosocial model of health and research because it's all well and good looking at the biology of progesterone and estrogen and going, ah, that's what's happening in the brain. But also you've got to take into account the psychological effects and the social effects too. For example, an individual psychologically could have a more anxious or a more depressive prone state. So when they have these drops in hormone, that could influence their moods much more than someone else. Everyone will have these individual sensitivities. And then the social side of things is everyone's attitude towards periods in general, when you do get people who are like, oh my God, she's just in a period. So if you're absorbing that information all the time, when you're on your period, you may act in a way that aligns with society's attitude. So yeah, biopsychosocial is now the way that researchers are trying to look at periods and PMS and other disorders that involve the menstrual cycle. Another interesting area of research is how the brain actually changes during our menstrual cycle, and particularly during the end of the luteal phase. The luteal phase is after ovulation and before you get your period. And it's when progesterone goes up and then goes down. And you can look into people's brains during their period at different time points and see if the brain is acting any differently just at rest or doing a task when there is high estrogen, when there is high progesterone and when there is low of both during the period. These studies are not that common, but thankfully they are getting more and more common to enable us to really study the brain during the menstrual cycle. But one research group took one person, N of one, not the best study, and they scanned this person's brain every single day throughout an entire menstrual cycle. And what they found there was that estrogen was really important for functional coherence in the brain, how the networks of the brain all talk together and work together to make us function properly. And they found the size of the hippocampus, the area that's really important for long-term memory, actually changed in size throughout the menstrual cycle as well. Now that's more towards the front end of the menstrual cycle where I'm in a much, much better mood. Let's go towards the very end now where I am like, oh my God, what am I doing with my life? This is rah! all the time. One study looked at 36 people during their menstrual cycle and they took brain scans when they were on their period, when estrogen was high and then when progesterone was high as well. Progesterone, progesterone, yes. When they were in the scanner, the participants did a couple of different tasks. They were looking at their navigation skills and they were also looking at their verbal fluency. And the researchers wanted to see do the results of these tasks vary throughout the menstrual cycle? And actually what they found was quite interesting that the results didn't significantly change throughout the menstrual cycle, but the brain activity that enabled the participants to get the same results did change. So when estrogen was high, there was increased activity in the hippocampus, but when progesterone was high, there was increased activity between a frontal part of the brain and the striatum buried in the midbrain and they think that potentially this is maybe a compensatory mechanism so you can still get to the same conclusion but the brain is working in a slightly different way to do so when progesterone is high we see this increased amygdala activity so our emotional memory is thought to be slightly better but in the very late luteal phase it's been found that we actually can have a negative bias on how we process information that's potentially due to this amygdala activity 
or the change in this amygdala activity that we see as progesterone drops and the amygdala starts to change its activity because it's not got that stimulation. And this has been shown in a study on facial recognition. And during this period of the cycle, people will have a more negative bias and they're able to pick up on negative emotions better. Another study that looked at 55 women during their menstrual cycle and scanned their brains at these different time periods found that during the luteal phase, the basal ganglia on the right-hand side of the brain gets a little bit bigger. The basal ganglia is really important in motor control. It's like the green light, red light of should I do a movement or should I not? But it is also important in emotional processing. And on the right-hand side of the brain, the smaller this basal ganglia is, the more it's been associated with potentially different mood disorders. And a smaller right basal ganglia has also been linked to some of the depressive symptoms that people can experience in Parkinson's disease. This is the part of the brain that Parkinson's really affects. So it's been hypothesized that maybe because during this luteal phase, the basal ganglia is slightly bigger, that when progesterone starts to go down, the basal ganglia may reduce in size again. And the change from big to small, although this is really, really slight, big to small may induce some of these mood disorders and mood changes that can feel really, really extreme at that time of the month. One way to better understand what is happening in our brains right before we get our periods and when we can feel a bit off is to study people who have a really extreme version of PMS, which is called premenstrual dysphoric disorder. These individuals have really, really, really extreme changes to their moods before their periods. It's thought to impact like one to 8% of people who menstruate. And someone described it as pressing the self-destruct button on their own life. And it can even lead to suicide. It can be really, really, really serious. So it's something that was only recognized as a mental health condition in like, I think it was 2013, not that long ago. And these individuals can have these extreme symptoms for a few days up to two weeks. What's interesting is that these individuals don't actually appear to have any differences in the levels of the hormones, estrogen and progesterone in their blood when they're assessed compared to people who have PMS or people who don't really experience mood changes. So it doesn't look like they have any difference in the amount of hormone in their system, in their brain as well. Although that is a little bit harder to study. But the hypothesis here is that their central nervous system, their brain is much more sensitive to the changes in these hormone levels than other people are. One hypothesis to why people might have premenstrual dysphoric disorder, PMDD, is that they might develop a tolerance to allopregnanolone, and that is the metabolite that progesterone breaks down to, which directly interacts with the inhibitory systems in the brain, which dampens down brain activity. And so it's thought that if you're developing a tolerance to that molecule, then there could be some sort of withdrawal when it leaves the system. So right before the period when progesterone is going down, this could be when individuals with PMDD experience a kind of withdrawal from that, which other people do not experience. And that is what could lead to some of these really extreme mood changes. In one 2008 study, people with PMDD showed enhanced processing of negative information and also decreased processing of positive information and diminished inhibitory control. And when they looked in the brain, they were found to have reduced activation in some of these frontal areas of the brain and increased activation in some of the more emotion-centered areas of the brain. So this is potentially hinting that these individuals may lose their top-down inhibition of being able to control quite heightened emotional states right before they get their periods. A 2013 study also found that people with PMDD had reduced work and memory during the luteal phase of their cycle compared to people without PMDD. And this correlated with a change in a genetic sequence, which makes a serotonin receptor. Serotonin is a molecule that's really important for mood stability. And there is this change that has been associated with PMDD that makes serotonin processing decrease in the brain. So potentially these individuals might also have a change in other brain systems that might make them vulnerable to these really extreme changes in mood that people experience 
right before their period or up to a few weeks before. And a 2023 study that looked at 30 people with PMDD and 29 without over a few different cycles scanning their brain found that right before the period, there looked like in the people with PMDD, there was an increase in a serotonin transporter. Now these serotonin transporters are important for mopping up serotonin in the brain. And this level was at 18% in the people with PMDD and 10% in the people without PMDD. So it could be the case that they have more of this transporter in the brain right before the period, and that is mopping up serotonin, which is important for stabilizing mood. So actually these individuals can be given SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, during this week or two weeks of their period to prevent these inhibitors from clearing up the serotonin and hopefully help to stabilize mood. This is obviously not the same as what I go through. I do not have PMDD. I have some form of PMS, I think, but it just goes to show the extremes that the hormonal changes in the body can make on the brain and can interrupt how we behave and also interrupt our normal moods and how we can feel so out of sorts. And so it's just good to know, like right before my period, if I'm wanting to make a massive decision about, I don't know, doing a project and I'm just going, that's crap and throwing it in the bin, which I've done so many times. It's almost good for me to reflect and go, just leave it a few days, come back to it and then see how you feel about it then. Because it might just be the case that my moods are a little bit more heightened. I'm less able to have that top down, like just think of other options, rationalize it a little bit more. So I just think it's really useful information to have in my back pocket about how my brain potentially is acting when these hormones are at lower levels, which happens right before the period. And if you feel like absolute crap at any point during the menstrual cycle, especially in that few days before or the week before or two weeks before, speak to doctor because there's so much, I would assume, undiagnosed PMS, which a lot of people have and can cope with just fine, but PMDD, that is something that needs medical advice and potentially you could get medication. So I think there's probably a lot of that undiagnosed. So yeah, if you feel like absolute rubbish, definitely speak to your doctor. Okay, that's it from me this week. I hope you enjoyed the little video. And if you did, then you can subscribe to the channel. There'll be more about how our brains work, why we do some of the strange things we do and how we can get our brain on side when we're wanting to do hard, challenging, effortful things. But yeah, okay, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.